I'm Jason from the Creative Collective. I've teamed up once again with the guys from AV3 Software to bring you a series of videos of how I use Boris FX within Avid Media Composer. If you haven't been across the uh, AV3 website, go check it out. There's some really good blogs and forums on there and some great deals on software as well. Always worth keeping an eye on there. Before we go any further, I just want to say thank you to the guys at Red Leaf AV for their content in the summer. Really good. And now, enough of me talking to you. Should we just get on with it? And I'll see you when it finishes. Okay, guys, so what we have here is my timeline on the screen. I've muted the audio tracks just so I'm going to fight against that. If I push play, um, I'll give you a quick rundown of the first two clips. Basically, if you saw my tutorials a couple of months ago with the mountain bikes, you would have saw how I use the uh, BCC light leaks and the color correction. If I just step in quickly, uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I used before we move on. So BCC light leaks on the, on the first clip. Second clip was color correction, the fast film glow. And then on top of all of that, to give it that kind of summer hazy feel, was a fast film process. If I just step out of that quick, and we'll go to the two clips I want to talk about. So we want to talk about BCC color correction today and how that links in with Mocha. We're also going to look at the um, fast lens blur. And once again, Mocha, there's a bit of a theme starting now, as you can see. And then we will, in the next episode, we'll look at how I use the particle effects on the van. Um, okay, so if we step into this, I'm just going to quickly go to effects mode. We're in there. Uh, we'll turn off the title studio for now. So I'm going to look through that. So this clip is made up basically. If I bypass the actual clip, you'll see what the original clip looks like. That's what the whole clip looks like. This is all the footage, as you can see. So what I want to do was to make the uh, old school kind of it's like a Catrum kind of car stick out a bit more and knock it one back in black and white. Um, and the only way I could, I could actually do it for the way I think is to Mocha. So I literally launched my BCC color correction plugin, which you can see here. It's bypassed currently, as you can see. I went down to Mocha and I launched Mocha. Now that's obviously saying I'm not running my full res. It's all right because I've done the track, but normally I would do the track in uh, green, green mode. If I just go into Mocha itself, and then you can see all the tracks that I created. Okay, so as you can see, there's quite a few tracks going on. There's a start side track, which is this little bit here. You can see the start and the end points, which I established. There's a later track, which comes in over here, which is that side piece there, believe it or not. And the front track, the later track obviously covers the front as well. The later track, which is uh, on the, the front on the top, because there's so much movement within the vehicle itself. And then the front track, which just picks up the front. It's obviously better to, to instead of trying to track the whole vehicle as one, is to create um, like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. I find it's far more accurate and far more easy to track. A good thing about Mocha, remember, is if you turn the perspective on when tracking, uh, it's not on by default, but if you're tracking a vehicle or something coming towards you or going away from you, I find the perspective really does nail down the tracks and it's a lot better. If you go to one of the earlier tutorials, I go into the Mocha tracking in a lot more detail. But what I want to look at the BCC, so we'll close this down for now. Let's we'll go back to the effect itself. So that's the bypassed effect. So all I've done is literally uh, really simple is I've created the mask. If I just show you the mask itself, that's the mask, really simple effect. I haven't actually didn't track the driver because I wanted him to be in black and white as well. It's all about the, the, uh, the go-kart in this case. I just turn the mask off. So you can see the difference. And then we'll just quickly look at the actual, how I did the effect. So all I did was really simply just grab my saturation and turned it down to nothing. So that's the saturation all the way up back there. I mean, we could, we could actually invert the whole thing if I was to turn the saturation all the way down. Uh, go down to uh, Pixel Chooser, Mocha Mask. Can invert the mask. We'll end up with a. That's quite cool. I quite like that. <laughs> um, a silver-looking vehicle. But the whole idea was to was to sort of get that whole the bright red vehicle and the black and white people, which I thought was really cool. So that's back to how it was before. So this is basically how I did the first effect. Uh, really, a lot of potential, especially when you start to track objects and then color the background differently. And obviously, the great thing Mocha is once you've done the track, you can use it again and again and again in many different uh, plugins as long as they'll read the track course and a lot of bcc plugins with the motion adapter will actually read the mocha tracks so it's really useful so if you wanted to, if you wanted to add some 
um, Puffy Rays, as long as I use the, the Puffy Rays version with the track, I can add rays to it and stuff like that. Really, really powerful, really easy to use. So let's move on. Um, I don't want to be, so let's just turn the Title Studio back on. That's the Title Studio, which we may, which we may uh, go into if we could time on the back of the second episode. So we look at the fast lens blur. This is pretty much the same thing again, going to effects mode. I'll turn off the title studio. Put the cab down the way. I will go to the effects. If I bypass the effects, you'll see the background is slightly blurred. There's a slight softening happening in the background, but not much. I'll turn it back on. You notice the difference. The, the whole effect I was going for was the go-kart and the guy in the, in the go-kart was going to jump on the frame a bit more. Um, I find that if you do too much affecting it sort of looks a bit unreal but this was more of a you don't even notice it's there but if i took it off you would notice that it wasn't there if that makes sense the whole effect sort of revolves around here but iris scale uh the the iris scale i just pushed up a bit you can see how it softens a bit more i find that gets a little bit too soft so i sort of find that five was the best way of looking and you got your scale and so forth plenty of stuff for you to play with i just want to have a quick touch on mocha which is sort of where I do most of my stuff these days. If I just launch Mocha, and we'll see that there's only three tracks in Mocha, the man, the body, and the wheels. The If you look at this window here where, I'm, where my mouse is sat, you've got eyes, will show you the track itself. You can turn the track view on and off. You've got the processing buttons, which turns the processing for the track on and off. You've got lock buttons. Um, if you want, you've done the track, you wanna lock it. As you can see, if I select, if I turn all these off, if I select the man track, if I turn the lock off, I've got all my edit nodes. If I turn the lock on, that is locked. I can't actually do anything. They're quite useful once you've done a track and you want to just leave it set. Always good to turn your locks on. Uh, just don't forget. Otherwise, you could edit them by chance, which can be rather annoying. So this is my the track I did of the man. If I just turn the other tracks off for, for now so you can see it. As you can see, if I just zoom in, let's go to my hand tool. Sort of tracked around the top of his fighter's helmet, comes down over his arms, onto the car, up, up his arm, across the windscreen and back again. So that's the track I did for him. Obviously, as all things in Mocha, it works best if you break it down to individual components instead of trying to do a whole track for something. I find it works a lot better. And the fact that I can do this with the media composer is, is flipping great. It keeps it really fast workflow. This whole track probably took me about between five and 10 minutes to build. The way I normally work is I start my track at the very beginning. I'll do a track until it says it can't track anymore or it finishes a track and then I'll track backwards, put little edits in where I feel there needs to be things need to be edited. I just zoom out. And that's where you get this keyframe from. I've got the auto keyframe turned on, which is there. So every single time I stop and, and move anything, you get a keyframe, I'll give you a quick example of that. I just turn off my, um, my lock mode. So as soon as now, where's my pointer? If I bring the pointer to here, let me just let's zoom in. So if I wasn't happy with this node here, I could pick up, and I will see it's, it's going to create, it's create an automatic keyframe, which is right there. It wasn't there before. Another great thing about using the X-Blind track is that instead of having two handles like a Bezier track to adjust, if I want to soften the corner, I can just grab this blue handle and push it in a bit. And it actually keeps the node in the same place. It just rounds the, the edge of the actual bounding box itself, which is really powerful. I'll give you a quick example of that. If I just pull this down out the way. So if you look at this corner over here where I'm sat, if I push this blue handle down, you can see how it actually rounds the bounding box out, but it keeps the node there. So it's a really easy way of working. So you can sort of over exaggerate the track points and then use this, these little handles to do the, uh, the curving, which I find really useful. It's a, yeah, really good way of working. It means you can work with one hand, which means you can hold a couple between the other. Um, so let's move on. If I just close all this up and then I go back. So all my tracks are open. All my tracks have got the, uh, the size attached and the process attached. Once I shut this down, this will go straight into the plugin itself. So this is what we have. We have, this is the, the track of our man in his car. If I just quickly sh sh launch the the mat, you will see what we kind of have. As you can see, the, the mat is really useful for showing you where you've missed, um, missed tracks out. So as you can see, I've got a little section here. This section here is the windscreen of his car, as I'll show you. It's this section here, which I'm not too fussed about missing out because it's, it's sort of all washed in there anyway. 
my main focus is the guy at the front of the car, the number, that little bit where I've missed out that piece, I'll have to go back and work on that. But it's still a very fast way, very effective way of working. So that pretty much is how I use uh, Mocha within, within the fast lens blur. The great thing about obviously Mocha, as I said before, is you can use the same track. I could now um, nest a color effect onto this clip as well, and then use the same track to do a color effect. Don't forget to go have a look at the AV3 website for the latest forums, blogs, and deals. You never know, if you don't ask, you don't get.